All right, sorry I couldn't be here today. We are going to be doing the 8-1 worksheet on area of parallelograms, triangles, and trapezoids today. Um, tomorrow is your test, so be aware. Chapter 7 test tomorrow. And the uh, review number 2 worksheet that you got on Friday is going to be due, okay? So check out the video if you need to for some help. Um, the answers are posted as well. On remind if you need it. If not, just send me an email and I can uh, send you a copy. All right, here we go. Eight one, area of parallelograms, triangles, and trapezoids. So remember, area is the number of square units to completely cover a two-dimensional figure. Um, it's a number of space, like the measure of the amount of space an object takes up. So like, if I put the paper on the table here, how much uh, space is the paper taking on the table? That would be the area. Okay. Um, for a rectangle, the formula is just base times height, okay? And since this is a 90 degree angle, the base and the height are the sides of the rectangle. When you have a parallelogram, okay, we have uh, still the product of the base of the height, but now the height is the perpendicular distance, okay, or the altitude between two parallel bases. So technically there's two sets of bases here, right? There's this base here and this base here. And then if we stood the figure up on end, it's going to look a little something like this. So now this is the second base, and the area actually, the, I should say the height, is actually measured kind of outside the figure here. So it's parallel to where this figure would kind of move off to the side. And so this is the height, all right? You could also kind of measure it from this point or any point down, but that those are the heights. So it's still the perpendicular distance between the two bases. So just keep that in mind as you're working along. And as we go through here, I'll let you know what the base is, and I'll make sure we fill it in on the worksheet before um, we go anywhere else. So first question, number one, what's the area of your parallelogram? We have the two bases, but this is the height. Remember, it's perpendicular to this base, so we're going to use this base and this height. So we just do area. And I, I kind of like to draw the little picture for the figure, so area of a parallelogram. I want to write parallelogram on every time. And it's just base times height, and then I plug in. So the base is 5. The height is four, and then we get 20, and it's measured in inches squared, okay? Now, if you ever wondered why we use inches squared, it's because we're doing five inches times four inches, and just like we do x times x, when you do inches times inches, it becomes inches squared. So it's, it's just that you're multiplying two inches together, and that's why it's inches squared, all right? Uh, and the next question, number two, so letter B over here, we have the same thing. We have sides of 4.6 and 2. Here we measure the height. Remember, it's perpendicular distance, so down from, from here to here. If you kind of want to think of it anywhere along that line, it's going to hit. So here's my base, okay? There's my height. So just keep that in mind. And this dotted line is not part of this base. So that's just the 2 and the 3.5. So area, parallelogram, base times height, 2 times 3.5. And here we're going to get 7 and then centimeters squared. If there aren't any numbers, uh, units listed, like it just says 2 and 3.5, you can just put u squared for unit squared, or you don't have to put anything into it for the answer. All right, number two. This question is kind of tough, but just keep in mind that we're using the, met, the, the area of the shape to connect both pairs of bases and heights. So in parallelogram ABC, what is DE to the nearest tenth? All right, so I'm looking for this, and this is a height. Now, I have a base down here, we'll call it base 1, and the height 1. And so if I want to figure out the height, really what I need to know is what's the area of the shape. And for this, you could almost imagine that I could turn my paper sideways, and now I'm looking at this is my base, and this is my height, okay? So there's a, still another set of bases of heights, right? The other base is, we'll call it B2 for base 2, is 13 inches and 9 inches, okay? So it's kind of like we, we, push, we push this figure over, and it falls over, and now it looks like this, right? Okay, so we kicked it over, so now B's over here, A is over here, and uh, D's over here, and C's on the bottom. There's my height going down that way, this is 9, and then this base going across is 13. So here I have this base in height, here I have this base in height, right? Uh, this base in height, and they're equal. Those two things have to be equal. 
So um, we can say the area of our figure is base one times base height one, right? And if you want to make an equation, you can say that that's also equal to base two times height two. And you can just plug in and solve. Or you can do the two measures separately. So we'll do both just so you get an idea how you can do uh, either way. So base one is 9.4, base two is 13. Okay, sorry, height one, base one, height one. Um, yeah, so I did not use the right thing there. That should be H1 instead of 13. Yeah, careful, right? Base two is 13, and then height two here is nine. And so we're just gonna multiply this out. So we're gonna get 9.4 times H1, and then we do nine times 13, so that's 27 to the two, that's 117. We divide out by 9.4, and then I should have my answer. And H1 is going to be equal. All right. And then we just divide out. So and here we get uh, a decimal. It's 12 point, you can see, uh, 12.4468. So we're just going to round out to the nearest tenth. And then that would be 12. OK, the other option, instead of doing like an equation like this, is just to calculate out the area first. So it's base one times height one. We don't know what that is. Right. And the other option was base two times height two. So here um, I know base two is 13. I know height two is nine. When I multiply that out, I'm going to get 117. And then from here, I'm just going to use that number and plug it in for the area. So now that I know what the area is, right, I'm going to plug 117 in here. And now that's equal to 9.4 times H1. And then we just divide out by 9.4. So either way, it's up to you how you want to go about doing this. But either way, you should get, uh, you get the same answer, right? Boom, there it is. And then just react accordingly, 12.4 is equal to H1, and then we're good. All right, so a uh, parallelogram with sides of 15 and 18, so same thing, let's just draw this out for ourselves, right? So 18, 15, um, has a height corresponding to the 15 base, so corresponding to the 15, this is the 15 base, so the height going from side to side here, right, perpendicular, is nine, and I wanna know what's the height of the 18 base, so if we drop this height down this way, what's that? So same thing, right? We do base one times height one is equal to base two times height two. All right. Um, so to pick a set, we'll do the nine and 15. So it's perpendicular here, like the T. So 15 times nine is equal to 18 times H two. And then we just uh, multiply itself. So this is equal to 45, carry the 4, so that's 35, 18 times h2. And then we're just going to solve for this. And here we get 7.5. And that was just divided by 18. All right? And then we're good to go. So that's how you handle the situation where you're looking for the height Right, and you know the, the base, you're just gonna find the area and then use the formula. All right, a triangle. So the area of a triangle is one half the product of the area of the height and the base. So for this one, what you wanna keep in mind here is why is that true, right? And it basically comes from the fact that if we take a rectangle and we cut it in half, well, that's a terrible line. If we cut it in half, right, then we end up with two triangles. So if this is base times height for the, the rectangle, divide it by two and that's where the area of the triangle comes. Okay, so it's just one half um, the rectangle to one half base times height. Okay, find the area of the triangles below. Now, right triangles are very special because we like them because they're very easy. Um, the base, remember the base and the height are supposed to be perpendicular to each other. So they form a 90 degree angle. So the, the legs actually constitute the base and the height because they're perpendicular. So in a right triangle, okay, in a right triangle, the area is actually equal to one half the leg times the leg, the product of the legs. That's it. 
the, the, the base and the height are the two legs. Even though the triangle is sitting like this, and you're always thinking to yourself, well, the base is the bottom, right? No, I can stand this triangle up and form it like this, right? And now I have a base and a height. Or I can, I can set it like this, okay? And now I have considered what you would say, well, now the, this is the bottom. So remember, depending on how you turn the figure, you can't just say the bottom because we can always orientate, change the, the rotate the figure around. And uh, the bottom side is going to change. So it's the base and height are two perpendicular sides. All right, let's get to it. So it's one half leg times leg, so five times twelve. Five times twelve is sixty. Half of that is thirty, and then we throw it on the meter squared. Okay. Here we go. Same thing. So once again, we have the height here, right? That's the ten. The base is the side over here, which is the twelve. So area equals one half, and you want to be very triangle. You can base times height. That's one half the base, which is 12 times 10. That's one, by the way, people. And that's 120 divided by 2. So that's 60 and then centimeters squared. Okay. All right, so we've got a little bit of work to do on this one. Here we're looking for the area of this triangle, right? And we know this is the height, and this represents our base, okay? The problem is, is I don't know what the base is, but... I can cut the base up into actually two parts. This guy, from there to there, and then this one, from there to there. And I can know that these are right triangles, so I can use the fact that I have the sides to figure this one out, use these two to get this one, and then I can just add those together. So let's start with the triangle, we'll call that triangle one. So in triangle one, we have a squared plus b squared equals c squared, or you might want to change it, right? c squared minus b squared is equal to a squared. Either of those formulas you can go ahead and use. So here 13 squared minus 5 squared is equal to a squared. That's 144. And then we square root and get 12. So that length from there to there is 12. And then we have triangle 2. Now I have the same thing. So c squared minus a squared equals b squared. You can switch a and b around. Um, it's not, not going to change anything. This is 6.4 squared minus 5 squared is equal to b squared. Now, this number is not very nice. Um, we're not going to want to round it, so I'm just going to leave it in radical form. So 6.4 squared, and then we'll just go through it. That is 40.96. I can already tell you it's not going to be, probably not going to be very nice, but we'll see. Um, and the other one's 5 squared, so we'll take away 25. We get 15. 0.96, right? And we're going to square root that. And the ch the question is, does this come out to be nice? And it doesn't, right? Uh, 15. It's 3.99, whatever. So it's it's not exactly four. Um, it's that decimal. So we can either write this, or we write that. So it's up to you. Um, if it says round to the nearest tenth or whatever, then you could uh, add them together and round accordingly. I'm going to leave it as the radical because that is the most exact answer. Remember, the calculator is actually rounding here on that, that last number one. There are more numbers, okay? That's an irrational number. It goes on forever. It doesn't repeat. So um, this is being rounded. So um, the area of my triangle, right, is base times height. Now we know this, 12. Point square root of 15.96, 15.96, that is the base. So it's 12, right, plus the square root of 15.96. Now, if you want to do decimals, that's fine. Just add 12 to it, and that's 15.9949687. And just use that, okay? That times the height, which remember, perpendicular is 5. And we're going to end up with, right, 60 plus 5 radical 15.96. That's the exact answer. If you want to do, um, if you want to do the straight through here, right, it's this 15.99499. That was that number right there, right? And then we just do times 5. And this is it, 79.9749843. It doesn't matter to me. If you like decimals, stick with it. If you like the radicals, go with that. Um, if you're not certain whether or not that's the same, you can always just plug it in. 
It's not what we want. Six to twelve plus square root. Five barely in this line. Nope. Fifteen point nine six. Is it outside here? And then uh, times five. And then same number. So there you go. All right. Okay. <clears throat> Some irregular shapes. So uh, here we have a combination of a, s a square, right, and a um, don't know what shape this is, so don't say isosceles, it's just a triangle. We don't know that these angles are equal yet. So uh, going down the line here, we have two shapes. So what we're going to do for the irregular shapes is break them into familiar shapes, find the area of each one, and add them together. So I really have a triangle, right, and a square. So it's one half base times height for the triangle. Remember, if this is six, so is that. So the area of the triangle is one half the base, which is six, times the height, which is eight. That's 48, and half of that is 24. So that's the triangle, once again, inches squared. We're going to bust out the rectangle, which is just base times height. Sorry, no, it technically is a rectangle, but it's a square. So six times six, which is 36. That's the area of my great looking square there, huh? Square. And then I just add them together. So the total area is 24 plus 36, and that is equal to 60 inches squared. All right. Okay, second one. Same thing. Square, uh, right angles, adjacent sides congruent. Here we have another uh, right triangle. Okay. So once again, it's one half a leg times the leg, the base and the height of the legs. All right, so area of the triangle is one half the leg times the leg. You can just do base times that there as well, but I wanna keep remembering you and reminding you of that formula for right triangles. All right, so 15 times eight, that's 42, four, eight, 120, divided by two, so that's 60 centimeters squared. And you can just type like 0.5 times 15 times eight, right in there. So um, you should be good to go. All right. Um, and then we're going to do the square here. So the area of the square. And then it's just base times height. So 15 times 15. And that's 225. So the total area is squared is 60 plus 225, which is 285 centimeters squared. All right. And then we go all the way down to the bottom. And we have the same, it almost looks like we have the same problem here, right? We're missing. Right, the base here, but just keep in mind that's a rectangle. So if this is eight, that is also eight. So just keep that in mind that you can use that bottom side to help you out here, right? Okay, so the area of the triangle, remember base and height are perpendicular, so five and eight. So it's one half base times height. So that's one half eight times five. So that's 40, half of that is 20. All right, and then meters squared. The area of the rectangle is base times height, which is 5 times 8, which is 40. All right. So the total area, you guys can see that, is 20 plus 40, which is 60 meters squared. All right. And you're good to go. 60 meters squared. All right. And that's it for that page. All right. Trapezoids. Now, trapezoids have a very um, unique formula, but keep in mind um, a couple things. Number one, you can always cut this up into a rectangle and two triangles, okay? The, in a isosceles trapezoid, the triangles are gonna be the same, all right? And keep in mind that this base right here also becomes the base between the two altitudes where the corners are here, okay? So this is really base one, and then there's two pieces of triangles left over, right? So how do we do it? Great question. So number one, we're running into, we have enough information right now to do this, 
to use that formula. So the formula is one half the height times the sum of the bases. And the bases, remember, are the two parallel sides, okay, the legs of the non-parallel ones. So for this one, we have enough information. It's just one half times the height and then the sum of the two bases. So one half the height, which is 10, and then we do base one, 16 plus nine. Now what I like to do here is just do half of the first number and add these together. So half of 10 is five, and then do 16 times plus nine is 25, and now I just multiply those two numbers together, and that's 125 feet squared, okay? And that's for a lot of All right, so for the second one over here, do we have the same information? Um, no, what we're missing here is a height. Hi, Ella. So, um, special guest, the big dog Hi. is here. All right, that's yes. the, the non sick one. I'm so. the one who left you the note. Thank you. All right. Yeah, there's a note on the board for all of you who might see you coming up. All right, so when you got this guy, this guy right here, keep in mind if this is eight right here, so is the side on the bottom. So that means that this piece right here is 10. And now we have a right triangle, right, with sides of, um, I really drawn the scale here, 10, 11, and then I don't know. <laughs> so, thank you. So we're going to use the C squared minus A squared equals B squared formula to get that height first, okay? Now, don't go throwing 30 degree angles in here. There is not a 3 degree angle here right now. We don't know what the angle measures are, so don't go throwing one in and just telling me, oh, look at that, it's half of 11, it's five and a half. No, okay, it's gotta be there already. Um, or you gotta know that the sides are equal, one of those things. So we plug it in, we get 11 squared minus 10 squared is equal to B squared. That's 121 minus 100, so that's 21. And then we just take the square root. And we're gonna leave it, simplest radical form. This is simplest radical form. So just square root of 21. All right, um, so now we have enough. So now we're going to do the area of my trap zoid. It's one half the height times the sum of base one plus base two. So one half the height, which is the square root of 21. So you can't multiply those together, okay? Um, and then we do the sum, which is eight times 18. So in simplest radical form, we treat the 21 like a variable. It just stays attached to the whole numbers as we multiply, okay? So 18 times eight, you can do that on your calculator. That's 16 times one, eight, it should be 96. Double check it though. It is not even close to that. I don't know what I was thinking. 144, so we're doing half the square root of 21 times 144, and then we do half of 144, which is 72. So just like it was x, it would be 72x, it's 72 times the square root of 21, okay? And then that would be our area. So area, bring down the trap, boom, and there we go, okay? All right, let her see, here we have a 30 degree angle. So now we've got some 60, uh, 30, 60, 90 going on here, all right? So if you don't remember, we need to figure out the length of the side right here, okay? Um, so keep that in mind as you go along, and we need to know the length of this side so we can figure out how to do the area of this rectangle. Okay. So if, right, if we have a 30 degree angle here, remember the rule for 30, 60, 90 degree right triangles. Is across from the 30 we call x, across from the 90 degree angle is 2x, and across from the 60 degree angle is x times the square root of 3. Okay, so if this is 30 and this is 8 and this is supposed to be 2x, that means x is 4. So this is 4, and then this side is 4 square root of 3. All right, now if you're doing decimals, that's fine. 4 radical 3 is 6.9 and some change. So if that whole thing is 15, obviously this is not drawing a scale here, it's 8.07 left over here. So this piece right here on the top, right? is 15 minus 4 radical 3. That's what that length is from here to here, right, and the top. So if we're doing the area of the triangle plus this, we could do that. We'll do the area of the trapezoid again. 
We have two parallel lines, two non-parallels from the trapezoid. So the area, trapezoid, one half the height times the sum of base one plus base two. And I would encourage you to write this every time, just so you can get used to the formula. Okay? So base one, we'll call it the big guy, is 15 plus, and then we have 15 minus four radical three, we're adding those together. Okay, so we can't add this with these guys, but we can add these two together. So once again, we'll do half of four first, so that's two, and then we get 30, and then it's minus four radical three. Now we're doing simplest radical form, so we're going to leave it, and then we just read the two through. So it's 60 minus eight radical three, and that would be the area in terms of simplest radical form. All right, um, if you want to check to make sure it's right, just type in what the first thing you did here, right? So one half times four parentheses, 15 plus 15 minus four square root of three, right? And I get that guy. So 60 minus eight radical three, better be the same thing, not eight radical eight people. All right, uh, so let's, And there we go, at 46 points, we're, we're checking it out here, all right? Okay, here comes another guy here. So, this is a 45, 45, 90. So remember, this is x radical two. Can we figure out these two lengths? And the answer is yes. Remember, if this is 1.8, so is this piece from here to here, right? So this would just be three, because it's 4.8 all together. So if this is three, then we know this is three, and that's our height. And then we can go ahead and do the area of our trapezoid is equal to one half the height times base one plus base two. And if you want to, instead of writing this, if you want to write trap, right? It's a trap for you Star Wars fans. Um, one half the height here, which is three. So base one would be the parallel sides. So we could do 1.8 plus this side, which is 4.8. So half of three is one and a half. We won't have to do that. We'll just leave it as is for now. Um, we're gonna add these together, so we got. Okay, if you want, we can do that 1.5 times, and then we do 1.8 plus 4.8, which should be 6.6, .6. and then we just multiply. We get 9.9, .9, and then inch squared, and that's the area of the trap. All right. All right, last but not least, coming on here. So, with this guy, we've got a trapezoid. What don't we have, right? We have a base one. And another way to kind of go through this is to look at the formula for the area. So it's one half the height, base one plus base two. And just go through, like, I, well, I don't have a height. I do have base one, I do have base two. So I need to go find that. So if you know the formula, you kind of have an idea of what you need to get. Now, drop the altitude down right here. We're going to form a 30, 60, 90 from the rules, 30 degree angle, 30, 60, 90. It's x, 2x, x radical 3. If you don't want to do that, just do the old Sokotoa, right? So from the 60 degree angle, if I'm looking for the height, I do need to get this. And we can get this because this is 5. And there to there is 5. The whole thing is 7, so that makes this 2, okay? So the height in the 30, 60, 90 world is two radical three. If you're not down with that, then you're just gonna do the old, I would like to do the uh, tangent of 60, please. Right, opposite and adjacent is equal to the opposite side over two. We'll just call that H. And then you just cross multiply. Two times the tangent of 60 is the height. You can get that crazy decimal or leave it as this. And then you're just gonna plug it in. So. We know the height is two radical three. So two square root that is not what you want, square root of three. We get that guy right there, right? And then if we do two tangent of sixty, we get the same thing. So you'll be alright. Alright, so it's one half the height, which we know was two radical three, or two tangent of sixty, if you want to put that in there plus base one, which is five plus seven, and then we just go to work. So 
Half of two radical three is half of two times radical three. So half of two is one. So this is just radical three. And then five times five plus seven is 12. And remember, we treat this like a variable. So this just becomes 12 radical three. There's our answer, right? You want to check it. You know what to do. 12 square root of three. There's a decimal, okay? And then I'm just going to do 0.5 times two radical three. Okay, get out of that little thing there, right? And then we do five plus seven, not 17. That ain't gonna end well. And then boom, same answer, okay? So just check it, you're good to go. And that's my area of the trap. All right, the next page is your homework. So I'm gonna leave this for you guys. All right, just some area stuff. Um, as you go along, a, a couple, Observations, number one, um, just remember that 11 here is the whole entire thing, okay? You can't see that, that's not good. 14 is the entire thing here, okay? Um, 12 is the height, these are the two sides. Is there anything else? Yeah, this guy. When you're doing this one, you don't know where the 14 goes. What I would recommend you do okay, is to create a square, right, around this. And if you figure out the area of the square, you can actually just subtract out this triangle. And that would be the easiest way to actually get the area of these two, okay? Let's call that the box method. Draw a box around it, find the area of what's missing from the box, and then you know the area of what's left, okay? That should help you out with the rest of it, so, all right? Um, I'll have an answer key for your homework uh, on Tuesday for you guys. Actually, was it Wednesday? So this homework is due on Wednesday. All right. So just keep that in mind. All right, guys. Hope you enjoy your day. Uh, finish up the homework, and we'll see you then.